All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back to another networking video. Today we are continuing our saga of what's on my network, and we are going to talk today about what's going on at layer three. And for the most part, that means IP addresses, but there's some mystical, magical things happening there that I think we ought to talk about. So first up, let's remember our build. We are talking about a home network, of course, and you can be behind any kind of modem for this discussion. And really the important feature is that we've got this home gateway in here, whether it's a wireless home gateway, a Linksys, a D-Link, a Belkin, it doesn't really matter. But today, the big question is, what is going on with the IP addresses? So very commonly what we see is that everybody gets a 192.168.something. And so our question is, why? Why is that there? Where do they come from? And how do nodes get them? And is there any significance there? And I guess the side question might be, what is our home gateway doing for us that we may not have realized? So let's take a look at Wireshark real quick. So we just glanced through this. We can see what is going on here. Look at all these IP addresses that are part of our network. Now, in this case, it's the gateway looking for all of these possible addresses that might be on the network. Now, another thing we can do, let's move this out of the way, is we can take a look at our conversations. And if we take a look at what's going on at layer three, right, that's our IPv4, take a look at, we've got 192.168.15s, so we got 192.168.2s, and then we've got a whole bunch of zero config or auto config addresses here, but an awful lot of 192.168. So what's going on here? Why are we using these? And, and more to the point maybe is that why are you using them? Why am I using them? Why is everybody using these particular addresses? Well, with regard to this address space, this is what we know. Almost all home networks share the same IP address space. Now, if you've done networking at all, or if you just maybe have an inkling of what IP addresses mean, is that IP addresses are unique to a node, or are they? Well, it turns out that almost every single home network and many small office uh, networks use the same IP address space. Everybody's using the same addressing. So why are we using these addresses in particular? And, and how do we get away with all of us using the same, the same ones? All right, so that's, that's one important question maybe. And then uh, where do they come from? How did I get those addresses? Well, the first thing that we gotta realize is that the internet has been out of addresses and has been out of addresses for a long time. And what that means is that you can't simply say, I would like a brandy new IP address that nobody has ever had before. The Internet Assigned Number Authority, IANA.org, has stated this. So we're officially out of address space. Now, there are a couple of strategies that, that have been developed to combat this problem. In fact, most folks don't even realize that we're out of address space on the Internet. The short-term solution is what we're going to talk about today, network address translation. And the longer-term solution, the thing that everybody hoped would, would come to fruition, is IPv6, or IP next generation. Now, IPv6 hasn't caught on very well, and you could make the argument that one of the reasons it hasn't caught on so well is because network address translation works so well. So, let's geek for just a minute here. There are a couple of RFCs that go together. RFC 3022, the traditional IP network address translator. And so this is just one line from the, the RFC. The basic network address translation or basic NAT is a method by which IP addresses are mapped from one group to another, transparent to end users. So what does that mean? That means that your inside networks, all of your IP addresses on those networks get translated. They get changed to a different IP address when they go out on the internet. And importantly, they get translated to the IP address that's given to you by your ISP. And that's what the outside of your home gateway has. Your IP address right there is where everything gets translated to, or the spot to which, or the IP address to which everything gets translated. 
Now, this is transparent to you. You don't have to do anything. It's automagic. Your wireless home gateway does that for you automatically. These addresses that we use internally are reserved for private networks. That's why we all use the same addresses. So you give everybody addresses that are the same on the inside, but they get translated to the IP address that's on the outside of the home gateway. And in that way, we get away with using all the same address space internally because you're not using it on the public internet anyway. So the thing that goes along with this is RFC 1918, which defines these addresses for us. So RFC 1918 is the address allocation for private internets. As I've got down here, the, this document describes address allocation for private internets. This is what your home network is. The allocation permits full network layer connectivity among all hosts inside an enterprise. So it doesn't really matter how big or some, small your network is, you get to use translation and these private addresses. Now, if you look at the upper right here, right above my head, is that collection of addresses that we use. There are three of them. We can see that there's the 10 net, the 172.16 to 31 networks, and hey, 192.168. So that address chunk is the set of addresses that by default we all use. Now we'll see here in a minute, you can use any address space from these three that you want to. The key is that these addresses are not used on the public internet. You'll never see one of these on the publicly available or publicly reachable internet address space. So everything gets translated and every home gateway performs this service for you using the private address allocations. And this is why sometimes people refer to network address translation as a security tool because nobody sees your inside address. But that's not exactly true. What network address translation is first and foremost is an an address management tool. And it just so happens that sometimes security goes along with it. But what actually ends up happening is that a lot of applications use your starting IP address anyway, because your node doesn't know that it's being translated. And so in that way, it's definitely not a security tool. Well, let's take a look at one other thing that your home gateway is doing for you. We're doing network address translation, and we're using the private address space. So this is one of the things that your home gateway does. The other thing that it does is it gives out all of these private addresses to all of your nodes inside. And so what that means is that your wireless home gateway or just your home gateway is serving as a dynamic host configuration protocol server. It is giving out addresses to everybody on your network. And by default, it is set up to give out private addresses. So there's another RFC out there, RFC 2131, that defines the dynamic host configuration protocol and how it all works. All of the operations, all the structure, all of the messaging, just like any other RFC does. So a little quote from 2131, the dynamic host configuration protocol provides a framework for passing configuration information to hosts on a TCP IP network. That is to say, one of the things that it gives out is IP addresses. It also gives out things like gateways, other servers, DNS, stuff like that. Now, the fun fact here is that you can control your DHCP server. In fact, you probably ought to at least look at it. And in some cases, you actually want to turn your DHCP server off. Let's take a look at an example of a wireless home gateway that I have. Now we manage most wireless home gateways via a web page. But before we do that, I'll just show you because we were geeking out about it. You can actually go out and read the RFCs that I mentioned earlier. Here is RFC 1918. Right? You, so you can read about why things came about the way that they did, a little bit of history, but also how it works. Here is 3022, the translator itself. And then here's 2131. These are Easily accessible on the web, all you do have to do is search for RFC and then whatever the protocol is. Now here is an example of a home gateway that I have, right? It's one of my spares. In this case, this is the configuration for 
my local area network setting. I can see that my gateway has an IP address of 192.168.2.1, and I'm defining a network here based on the subnet mask. This is a very common value, 255, 255.255.255.0. And this just means that the entire network or the set of addresses that I would give out are the range of 2.0 to 2.55. And what we actually give to hosts is 2.1 to 2.254. Now, here are the settings for the DHCP server. Now, first of all, we can see that the server is on and that it is giving addresses out beginning at 2.2. But I can configure this any way that I want to. Let's say that I have a dozen nodes on my network. I might really, really pare this down to say, well, I just want to give out addresses from 2.2 to 2.15, so a much smaller number of addresses. It's a security configuration. It is uh, what would allow me to control the number of nodes that are on my network. But really, our first line of defense there is our wireless encryption, of course. Now, another thing that we might do is turn the server off. And I'll show you an example of why you might do that here in a little bit. But if I have more than one wireless home gateway, what I don't want to do is have two of them giving out addresses because the nodes will get confused. You only want to have one DHCP server on your network. Now, the other thing that I can do is completely change what these addresses might be. Let's say that I really wanted to embrace this idea of networking, I might use one of the other address spaces. So 172.18.0, right? I might, I might do something like that. I might use the 10 net, like that. There's nothing at all that says that you can't use the other private addresses because no one will know. And your wireless home gateway will translate the addresses for you. So it really doesn't matter. This is another way of sort of personalizing your home network. It also makes it harder for somebody that might be out to attack your network to guess what's going on inside your network. Because, again, by default, everybody uses the 192.168 address space. This is a way to get off of that. All right, so these are the basic DHCP settings that you would use on any home gateway. Clearly, there are a lot more settings on a home gateway. We'll talk more about those as the course of this series goes, but that'll be DHCP and the IP address space for today. Now, as promised, here's an example of where you would have a DHCP server, one of your home gateways running as a DHCP server, and one of them I would actually turn DHCP off. Now, if this is a wireless home gateway down here or just another router, I would absolutely turn DHCP off on, on one of these nodes and just run it on the other one. That way, even this laptop here, because this lower wireless home gateway is acting as just maybe an access point or a set of switch ports, it's getting an IP address from my main home gateway. That way, there's no confusion about where my IP address comes from, no confusion about what address space. I mean, imagine what would happen if this one defaulted to 192.168.1.0 and this one defaulted to 192.168.2.0. You would have two different networks operating on the same layer two ethernet network, which is never a good idea. So this is at least one example of where you would turn off one of your DHCP servers. So if you're out there on those garage sales and you're rummaging around, and you find yourself a cheap one of these to expand your network a little bit, turn off that DHCP server and go ahead and hook it up. Well, that was our home networks and layer three. Remember, what we're talking about here is a lot of stuff. You can really get into the nitty gritty on network address translation and private addressing as one topic. And I provided a whole series of videos for those. I'll link those in the show notes. And DHCP, if you're really interested in how DHCP servers work, I've also got a set of videos for that as well. Right now, remember that your little wireless home gateway that you spent 50 bucks on, or maybe you spent more on it, maybe you spent $200 on it, does a lot of stuff for us. There's actually a lot of functionality built into those devices that we may not realize. And 
The reason we're talking about today, of course, is that even though we're talking about our home networks and maybe we're just getting started on our networking journey, it's always nice to know some of the reasons for this behavior. So we're going to learn all the things. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like and subscribe if I help. And may those home networking packets always reach their destinations.